Record. All right. We're recording there. We're recording there. We're recording there. I've got my shoe. I guess I can make my video now. Well, hello there. Welcome back. We are back to talk about some trail running shoes today. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at the Ultra Mont Blanc trail running shoes. If you're new around here and you don't know me, uh, hello, I'm Dave, and this is my channel where I talk about trail running and endurance sports and GPS watches and shoes and all that stuff. But I'm also a longtime Ultra advocate. I've been wearing Ultra shoes for a very long time. I've probably got like 10 pairs of Ultras at home between my road running shoes, my trail running shoes, and just shoes I wear throughout my daily life. And I mention that because I probably do have a little bit of a bias when it comes to Ultra footwear, but I do want to talk about the Ultra Mont Blanc and what I think about them so far. I've had these shoes for about two months now. I've been wearing them on all my trail miles. They've got a significant amount of mileage on them, and I'm finally at a point where I can share my thoughts with you. Some thoughts are gonna be good or pro, and then some are not so great or cons. But before we do dive all the way into this video, I do wanna remind you to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you find this video helpful or entertaining. And if it wasn't helpful, maybe, uh, I don't know, leave me a comment why it wasn't helpful. And I also wanna mention that if you are interested in picking up a pair of Ultramont Blancs or any other shoes I show off in this video, I will have links in the description down below that do help support my channel, so uh, use them. Okie dokie, moving on. Uh, the structure of this video is gonna go kinda like this. I'm gonna go through kind of the specs and general features of the Ultra Mont Blanc shoes, and then I'm gonna give you kind of a rundown of my pros and cons, what I like about them and what I don't, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you kind of a wrap up and who I think these shoes are designed for. Spoiler, these shoes are not for everybody, and there are a couple of issues with them that I don't absolutely love, but there is a lot to love about them as well, and that's just very complicated. The Ultra Mont Blanc is a shoe that has two main goals. First, being very light, in second, providing lots of cushion, and that's what the shoe excels at. The Ultra Mont Blanc comes in at 10.1 ounces on my scale for my men's 10 and a half US shoe, and that is actually pretty light because if we compare it to something like the Ultra Lone Peak 6.0, this is about 3.3 ounces heavier, so it's a little bit heavier, and it also offers less cushion. So this is providing more cushion while being lighter in the Lone Peak is a little bit heavier, but provides less cushion. So that's pretty odd because usually when you add cushion, it becomes heavier. So they did some magic here. All right, so let's walk around the exterior of the shoe and take a look at some of the features. Uh, the upper of the Mont Blanc is made up of an engineered mesh that is ultra light. And it's so light to a point that if I stick my finger in here, I don't know if you could see it in my camera, but you can actually see through the mesh. It is so lightweight. This is really cool and it actually does feel pretty durable, which is something I don't often say about ultra shoes. Like I said, I do have a good amount of mileage in these, probably a little over 100 miles. Uh, and I gotta say they're holding up well so far. So that's a good thing. That super lightweight mesh is really only around the rear of the shoe where the heel is. And that's because you don't often get hit by rocks and stuff back here. While up front of the shoe, there's an overlay where it's a little bit more durable and you can see that the material isn't quite so see-through. It's still an engineered mesh and it does have some welded overlays. Even the Ultra logo here is a little bit of a constructive welded overlay. And then around the front of the shoe, around the toe, you can see that there's a bunch of little welded overlays to add a little bit more durability right where you need it in the front of the shoe. The lacing system on the Mont Blanc is also pretty typical. There's no holes going through with grommets. They're actually little loops of nylon that hold the laces in place and nothing out of the ordinary here. One thing to note though, and I'll wait for my cons to talk about this a little more, is that the laces themselves are very thin and they're very static. There is not a lot of stretch to the laces, but we'll talk about that more a little later on in this video. Moving into the heel and kind of the ankle area of the Mont Blanc, you can see that there is very minimal padding. Uh, there's really not much to the ankle area. There's no like big pillows around there. And even the tongue itself, if you can see here, is also extremely thin. The material is just basically a, a thin piece of, it feels like leather, but it's probably some sort of pleather. And uh, yeah, there's not much to it there. And all of that reduced padding just leads to a lighter shoe overall, which is fantastic. However, there are some downsides to this as well. Moving into the rear of the shoe up top, you can see there's a nice generous pull tab that's really big. And you can actually fit an entire finger in there, which I really like. A lot of times when you buy a shoe and it's got a little dinky one, you can barely grab. It's not much use, so it's good to see that they focused on that here. And then below that, we do have Ultra's Gator Trap. The Gator Trap is a little piece of Velcro that if I peel back like this, exposes a piece of Velcro on the inside. 
And Ultra actually sells gaiters that will attach here and then you fold this back up and you've got some nice protection around your shoe without any added bulk in the back, which I really like as well. Let's move on to the sole of the Ultra Mont Blanc. The midsole on the Mont Blanc is made from Ultra's Ego Max material, which I personally really like. The stack height on the Mont Blanc is 30 millimeters, which is considered a max cushion shoe. And it's very similar to the cushion that you get on the Ultra Olympus, which is their flagship cushion shoe. And because it is so thick, you do get a nice amount of cushion, even if you decide to use these to run on the road. I had no, issue, no issues with these running on the road in between trails. In fact, it did feel pretty similar to the Ultra Paradigm shoes I use for road running. And of course, because this is an Ultra shoe, this is a zero drop platform. So that means the distance from the heel to the sole and the forefoot to the sole is the same. There's no offset like on a typical shoe. And this leads to less fatigue over time. There's a lot of theories why this is better than a traditional stacked up shoe. But in my opinion, it's totally personal preference. Flipping the shoe over and moving on to the outsole of the Ultra Mont Blanc, we've got a Vibram Base Light outsole with tons of traction and grip. You can see here, there's a bunch of multi-directional lugs here. And because this is a Vibram or Vibram, people pronounce it different. I'll, I'm gonna say Vibram for this video. It does really grip on just about any surface. Because this is a light base outsole from Vibram, there's actually a mixture of materials used here. So you've got this black area, which is actually a, uh, it's like a harder kind of stickier rubber. And then in the middle here is actually just exposed midsole. So there's nothing going on in the middle here. And because of that, it becomes a very lightweight outsole. And that's why they've kind of sculpted it in this way. One thing to note about this midsole and outsole combination is that there is no rock plate inside the Mont Blanc. So if you're gonna be on some real pointy ground with like sharp objects and pointy rocks and granite and things like that, you may wanna consider something like the Lone Peak 6.0, because this does actually have a rock plate and a little bit more protection in that situation. But for me, it hasn't been really an issue at all. Okay, now that we've run through the design and specs of the Ultra Mont Blanc, let's talk about what I liked and don't like about these shoes. First up, we'll go through the things I liked. The cushion on the Ultra Mont Blanc combined with that Ultra Ego Max midsole has been a real joy for me. I like the combination and it's a really fun and energetic ride. It doesn't feel like spongy or like you're losing all of your energy. And overall, I really enjoy the cushion. Next up, I wanna say the traction has been a real joy. I know I just covered it when we went through the design, but I'll mention it again. The traction on the Mont Blanc is really good and feels superior in a lot of ways to some of Ultra's other shoes thanks to that Vibram or Vibram outsole. The third thing I really like about this shoes is a little bit shallow, but it is important. That's gonna be the looks, especially in this colorway. I don't know what it is. I like this combination of like super bright, uh, vibrant orange and then dark in the back. And out on the trails, I think this thing looks really cool and you gotta look cool when you get in front of that race photographer. So I do like the looks of this shoe and I will give that a thumbs up. And the last thing I wanna mention that I do like about this shoe is the last or foot shape of the shoe itself. For my feet, again, everybody has different shaped feet and I've got sort of weird feet where my midfoot is wider than usual. So I've got like kind of a narrow heel, I've got a wide midfoot and then I've got a really wide forefoot. I don't know why I was born with clown feet, okay? But for whatever reason, this shoe actually forms to that pretty well. And I'm pretty impressed by that because a lot of shoes are not. A lot of times I end up with this like bulging area on this side of the shoe where my foot kind of like overhangs the midsole material. It's just something I live with. On this shoe, that has not been an issue. And on top of that, I have been wearing a men's 10 and a half, which is my typical like road shoe and everyday life shoe and the same size as my Ultra Lone Peak 6.0s. So it's good to see that the sizing is consistent between the Mont Blanc and some of Ultra's other offerings. Even though there's a lot to like about this shoe and so far it seems like I'm raving about them, I wanna talk about a few things that I don't love so far. First of all is the fit. Now, even though the shape of the last itself is pretty good for my foot, I have weird feet and this matches up pretty well, the fit of the shoe overall has not been great in my experience. For whatever reason, the heel on this shoe is just super loose on me all the time. I can crank these laces down super tight and you know really be crushing my, my midfoot here, but when I go for a run, I can feel my heel sliding around in the back of the shoe and it is just not a good feeling at all. There's just not a lot of security in the back of the foot while the front of the foot feels okay to me, but the back, when you're like hitting a corner, you're running downhill, or even when you're climbing, I feel the shoe just shifting around in basically every direction. 
There just doesn't seem to be enough structure back here to really feel like you're locked into the shoe. The next thing I don't like are the laces. Like I mentioned already, these are very thin and they're not stretchy at all. So it feels like you're really crushing your foot when you crank them down, which you have to do because you can't get that heel to lock otherwise. And I just don't love the laces overall. I know this could be fixed if I went and bought third party laces, but it would be nice if the laces were good out of the box. Another reason why I don't like them is because they are so thin when you do crank them down because the uh, tongue itself and the outsole or the uh, upper material is not very thick, you can actually feel the laces kind of digging into your foot. You can feel the individual laces going across your foot and kind of cranking down. And it's just not comfortable overall. The other thing I don't like about the shoe is because there's not a lot of padding around the ankle and the tongue, uh, the tongue itself is just not comfortable. First of all, it's like comically short where the tongue kind of gets stuck, it sucks itself down into the shoe. When I'm trying to lace up and when I go for like a little bit of a run, it starts to work its way down into the shoe. And after miles, you'll find that your tongue gets all jammed up like this and kind of just ends up all crumpled up inside the shoe. And because it is so short, you can't just grab it and pull it out. It's just kind of a pain. You gotta like take the shoe off, pull it out, get your foot back in. Don't love the tongue overall. And finally, the last thing I don't love about this shoe is the price coming in at $180. This is considered a more expensive trail running shoe, which is expected for a max cushion shoe like this. But with some of the issues I've found so far, I feel like, I don't know, I, it's, a, it's a hard pill to swallow paying 180 bucks for this. Ah, I don't know. Okay, so who is the Ultra Mont Blanc for? Because I had such a major issue with the fit of this shoe and my heel sliding around a lot, it's really hard for me to recommend for full on trail running or ultra running or racing. However, that's not to say this shoe doesn't have a place in the market. In fact, I could see the Mont Blanc being a really good option for long distance hiking or just hiking in general where you're looking for a max amount of cushion, a really lightweight shoe in some durability. And also in those applications and hiking and walking and things like that, that's where the fit of the heel isn't quite as important as it would be if you're running full on speed around corners and things like that. And that's really where you notice the looser heel. For trail running though, I think if you're looking for a zero drop max cushion shoe and you really like the ultra lineup, I would suggest looking at the Ultra Olympus because even though, though it is a heavier shoe, it does offer a lot of other features that the Mont Blanc just doesn't have. That includes more durability up front. You've got the welded overlays of the Olympus. You've got a better fitting heel with a little bit more cushion in there. And the tongue is a bit longer and a little bit more well-constructed. And honestly, the ride difference between these two is very similar because they're both a max cushion shoe and they both have a Vibram or Vibram outsole that is also very grippy. And yeah, I like the Ultra Olympus overall. I would say if you're interested in the Mont Blanc and you, you're really die hard about the weight and really just want to dial in being lightweight, try it on. You might like it if your foot can work with that heel situation. If it doesn't work for you, check out the Ultra Olympus. Even though it is a little bit heavier, I think it might be a better option. All in all though, the Ultra Mont Blanc is still a very exciting release from Ultra because it represents a new product line from Ultra. There's a lot to like about this shoe and with some dialing in, some little tweaks here and there, I feel like they can make this shoe absolutely a killer option for trail and ultra running. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to the next version of this whenever they come out with an Ultra Mont Blanc 2. I feel like they're gonna nail it and everyone's gonna be gravitating towards it because it's really close to being perfect. And now I wanna hear from you. Are you wearing the Ultra Mont Blancs? What do you think about them so far? Do you have issues with the heel? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not wearing the Mont Blancs, let me know what trail running shoe works for you. I'd love to hear from you. All right, that's all I've got for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing down below because that really helps out my channel and I really appreciate it. Also, if you're interested in picking up the Ultra Mont Blancs or the Olympuses or the Lone Peaks or any shoes, oh geez, I just knocked something over. Check out the links in the description down below because those links do help support my channel and I really appreciate that. Okie dokie, it's really nice out today and uh, I don't want to be inside anymore. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.